for a headline and link, right? There's more contrast. So this first option, no contrast, no visual interest. Little more contrast, little more visual interest. More contrast, more visual interest. We get a better. And I also want to talk about some design principles, right? So we're looking at no sliders. I feel like it would be remiss if I didn't say this. I'm like, do I really need to say this? But yes, 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 I do. Sliders happen when no one can make a decision. Sliders are the results of meetings gone very, very wrong. <laughs> sliders are the results of designers saying, I give up. I give up. You can't make a decision for your business. You can't make a decision on what you're going to what you're going to focus on, what's most important to you to communicate, or it's decision by committee, and their committee can't make a decision or agree on anything. So a slider is the result of, we'll make everybody happy, we'll just stick it in a slider. Sucks, but there's nothing that I can do at this point. So sliders are the worst case scenario in most cases. Um, and here's why. Most people never advance the slide, right? You either set it to auto advance, and then it's moving and people are like, crap, I didn't see what that said. How do I go back? Oh shoot, oh wait, dang it. How long do these take? That one went so fast. These ones are taking forever. It's back, wait, shoot, I started from the beginning again. Dang it, oh wait. And they're like, screw it, I give up. And they move on. Right, or you don't auto advance it and then people realize they, they don't realize they have to advance it themselves and they never see anything past the first slide. So if you use a slider, you have to assume no one will see anything other than the first slide. So anything other than the first one will never be seen. No one will ever click anything. So if you have a slider right now, whatever's on the first slide is what people are seeing. So if you have one, that's okay. Don't be dismayed. But evaluate the content that's on those slides. And if, you, if, you're, if it's built into your theme and it's not an easy thing to change, that's okay too. Make sure the most important thing, if people are only going to see one slide, make it your first one. And then anything you cover on the slides after slide one, make sure you also cover it down further <coughs> on the page, somewhere else on the page. So that people can still engage and get that same content or that same call to action, but somewhere else on the page. Don't simply rely on it being in a slide. <coughs> also, do the expected. Don't try to get all fancy. Don't stick the logo on the right. The logo goes on the left. Maybe sometimes in the middle. But people expect it to be on the left. When someone comes to the site, they expect it to be in a certain place. They expect the logo on the left, the navigation on the right, the header at the, you know, the menu at the top. They don't expect the, like, for a while, you start seeing all these themes that are like, look, I'm all creative. I put my menu into the bottom of the browser. And then people are like, where? I can't find how to get to the next page. Oh, after like five minutes, I figured out how to the bottom I'm scrolling. Like, it's crazy dance. Put things where it's expected, right? So don't try to get all crazy. And when it comes to, come, when it comes to the important things, your call to action, everybody used to like say, put it above the fold. Guess what? There's no fold. Because there's responsive design. There's no, there's, there's kind of the idea of a fake fold, right? There's a hard bottom on the bottom of your screen. You want to keep the most important things visible on the screen. But people are used to scrolling. Scrolling is a part of everyday life. People scroll all freaking day long on everything, right? So it's okay. Not everything has to be above the fold or at the top, but the most important thing has to be at the top. Your search should be at the top. Your social icons, not at the top. Right? Everybody's like, put my social icons way, way at the top. I want everybody to go to my Facebook page. Now people are like, oh my god, I don't even know if I want to be on Facebook. <laughs> but, say rethink that, right? Rethink where your social icons go. People expect them to be in the footer, especially for brands. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but also on our hierarchy, right? Things that are the most important are usually at the top of the page. They're usually the biggest. 
they're in a video, or they're in an image. There's a lot of contrast, right? We look at, uh, there's a lot of white space, right? Low, the low hierarchy, if it's not very important, it's usually stuck at the bottom of the page. It's in the footer. It's surrounded by a bunch of other things. It's going to be a text link instead of a button, right? So the difference between low and high and high visibility, you want to honor that hierarchy, right? Admin things don't need to go up in your top menu, stick it in a footer menu, right? So we want to look at what is the most important things on the page, right? We tell clients, if somebody only looks at one thing on this entire page, what do you want that one thing to be? If they like it, they're interested, and they stay a little longer, and they look at a second thing, what's the second thing you want them to see? If they really like you and they stay even longer, what's the third thing? Based on those actions, you know what needs to go at the top, the middle, and the bottom of the page. Also, spacing matters when it comes to design, right? If we look at these, they're almost exactly the same. But on the left, all the spacing is exactly the same. And on the right, we have a bigger gap in the middle. Spacing matters because things that are close together subconsciously say these things belong together. So on this side, even though the text is broken up with a subheadline, it still all runs together. So subconsciously, your brain says, this is all one thing. It's just different parts of one thing. Where on the right, subconsciously, your brain says, that's two different sections. It's two different things. So spacing, even though it doesn't seem like a big deal, and that's really only the difference of like 10 pixels. That little difference of 10 pixels subconsciously makes a really big difference. But we're close to the end. I've got a couple critical reminders before we'll have some Q&A. Mm -hmm. Clear is better than clever. When it comes to design, it is always better to be clear. Simple, easy to understand. Don't get all fancy with your navigation things. Call them all weird things. You may think you know what they mean, but nobody else knows what they mean. Right? If it's a services page, call it a services page. Right? Try not to get all clever. The idea here is people are bombarded constantly with marketing messages and calls to actions and all kinds of other things, and everything is hard. And there's ads everywhere, and it's an awful experience. And when they come to your site, do what's expected. Make it really clear. Make it really easy. Make one primary call to action per page, right? Don't make your calls to action fight against each other. It's like having an argument with yourself. One primary call to action, one thing that has a button. That's the easiest way to say it. One thing that has a button. On a blog post, one thing that has a button, that's your opt-in. You can have other calls to action in your content. Those are text links. One thing with a button, anything else is a text link. Right? But one primary call to action. And then reduce your distractions. If you do have a sidebar, never make your sidebar longer than your content. Find the page on your website with the tiniest bit of content there is and make your sidebar shorter than that content. Otherwise, you end up with a long sidebar and a little bit of content, a funky giant white gap of nothingness that makes it look like you messed up. So always make your sidebar short and then rethink those social links again. Right? Rethink whether they should be in the header or in the top of your sidebar or wherever they are. Social sharing links, stick them at the bottom of your post because one, most people don't use them, and two, if they've reached the bottom, they're more likely to share. Links to your profiles, not the social sharing of your blog post, but links to your profiles, stick them on your footer because I'll leave you with this thing to think about. Every time that you link to a social media account, every icon that you stick on your website, is an opportunity for somebody to leave, find their friend's dog pictures, cat pictures, food, whatever it is, get distracted and forget that they were on your site in the first place. Every single social icon you add, you're giving people more opportunities to leave your site and to not engage with your content. So do me a favor as you work on your sites. Practice good web design, not web decoration. <laughs> Everything needs to have a purpose for being there. And with that said, I'm Jennifer Gordon. Thanks for having me. All right, we have a little bit of time for Q and A. I have a prospect.
the size, and then when they go to upload it, everything in the media library that's not 1500 by 500 is, is not enabled. Like, they can't pick anything but one that size. So we'll do that sometimes to, to kind of force to force it. So, yeah. Anybody else? Yep. Ah! Okay, I, if you talk fast, I could probably do two. Navigation. Yep. Navigation. Menus are great on a desktop or a laptop. Yep. Top menus. Yep. When you have a mouse. But handover icons really seem very clumsy to me on the phone. Do you have any advice? I think that I, I yeah I think that the hamburger menu is the industry standard. It's only becoming more and more and more and more and more common. It's everywhere. Everybody uses it. It's becoming the expected. But I think if your audience isn't one that's super tech savvy, they're not online all the time. If your audience is a casual user, then you need to add like the best thing to do is to use the word menu or add the word menu next to that hamburger icon. Um, but again, it goes into clear is better than clever, right? So if your audience isn't one that spends a lot of time online and the hamburger menu might not be familiar with them, then go with the, just use the word menu. Yeah. Can you share some of your favorite uh, stock photo? Uh, we have a subscription to Shutterstock, and I think that they're actually getting crappier. But, um, <laughs> but I think that they're just allowing a lot of, of crap images in. But, um, but we, we use a, a subscription from there. Um, but it just kind of depends on budget and what you're looking for. You know, you know. Yeah. But OK, one, I think we'll do one more, and then we're done. Yes. OK, so subscription form, you were saying yep. that the most important is the top. Yep. And that drives me crazy when they're at the top because you're asking to subscribe to the top to the site. So what do you think about the Twitter subscription forms that scroll? Well, I don't, I don't, it depends on the page, right? So uh, her question was subscription forms. I say put the most important things at the top. If your opt in is the most important thing, should it go at the top? And is that the right place if they haven't even consumed your content yet? And my answer is it depends on the page. There's, it's not the same for every page on your website. So on a blog post, I would never put an opt-in at the top of the page because the best place on a blog post is at the bottom of the blog post when they're done. Or for clients who use a sidebar, we put it not at the top of the sidebar, we put it at the bottom of the sidebar and make it sticky so that when they scroll up, it sticks to the top. And no matter how long they scroll, the opt-in is always there and it never goes away. So it depends on the page. For certain pages, it's going to be, you know, at the top, like it may have a video and a call to action, like a video and a little bit of content and an opt-in next to it, and it's at the top. A short, you know, squeeze page, opt-in, whatever. Blog posts, you're going to put them in different places. So it, it, the position of your call to action will change based on the page and the goal and the content that you have. Yeah. Well, it's 11.52. Lunch is on the tables outside.